Excuse me, class. Class. Well, we're on our way over to see a, a guy I know named Mickey. And Mickey owns a, a small bandsaw mill. Does a lot of custom cutting, and uh, we're gonna go talk to him about techniques and just how how his little sawmill works, um, and possibly ways that he and I could work together that benefit us both, either in getting me some lumber or um, in helping me make some extra money. If you have not subscribed already, please take a moment to do so. It helps this channel out more than you can know. And if you look down in the description below, you'll see different links to products that we've been using here on the homestead. If you click on those links and make a purchase through Amazon, a little bit goes towards our homestead. Helps us out more than you can ever imagine. Enjoy the rest of the show. Try to buy a one by twelve cedar. You're gonna spend, I don't know, one by fifty bucks. Oh. Yeah, one by twelve is what uh, probably three four dollars a board foot. Yeah, I would e say easily so. that much. Mm -hmm. So that that right there, that's what eight foot. No, this or is close like seven, seven foot. foot. Yeah. So yeah, you're talking at least that much because when I was still at the mill, cedar cedar was on its way up before I left the mill, mm -hmm. and uh, one of the other graders I worked with. His dad worked at uh, CBS and said that they stopped carrying any 1x12, it was all custom order, and a 10 footer was over $100. Wow. That was two years ago. Yeah. I don't know where the prices are. I haven't, I haven't checked now, but that is a pretty board. And this go. is done on your, your bandsaw. Yeah, bandsaw. Um, now, do you do anything with a chainsaw other than cutting them down to length? No, that's it. Sometimes on the mill, if a log is too big, we'll have to take a chainsaw and cut it up. Okay. And that's Let's just, you're doing one inch cuts on most of it? Inch, yeah, they're okay. going to end up about seven eighths. Sure. The curve from the blade. Um, let's go over here. There's a lot. This is a big old cedar log. Yeah. This is uh, two thirds of it. This was, this, um, okay, this one's on. Yeah, 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 let's do that real quick. Hey guys, this is Mickey with Kindred Family Farm. Um, he's the he's the friend I was telling you about with the bandsaw mill. And we're out here today talking to him about some of the different custom cutting, uh, the way we can possibly work together in the future when he needs wood. Um, but he's gonna walk us through a few things today on his bandsaw mill, the different types of lumber that you're cutting and half cut. and. Uh, yeah, just uh, let, let's see what you got. Uh, look, tell us what you tell us what you know. Okay. Well, um, I have a little wood miser. We'll go down and take a look at it in a second. And I'd like to share some some different strategies that homesteaders can use to um, build their own home, to make extra income. Um, different marketing strategies that you can use to to, to help your family out. And, the beauty of it is you can work together as a family to, to do this kind of thing. So right. that's the main reason why I do it is because we work together as a family, so it's, it's really nice. But I also want to show you some strategies that you can use with uh, lumber that some people will just burn it or throw it away or use it as firewood, where uh, since you have your own salmo, you can take those and make them specialty pieces, specialty lumbers, and triple and quadruple your profit on them. So okay, that's, that's, that's what you need right Yeah, and we can start right now since we're standing here. We have a cedar uh, log. This is the base end of it. It's actually, when it rolled down the hill, it broke in three pieces. So here's two of the pieces. Now typically what most people do is they'll take a wedge and they just make cedar posts out of it. Okay. It's all, you know, there's not much to it. And you can do that and you can still make good money off that. That's a, a hand split rail? Yeah. Okay. And because they do that because it's all rotted out, it's burned out. This one was in a fire. So it got burned out. Um, there's a couple things that you can do with something like this. 
is we live in a day and age where repurposing things is is the new rave. So I actually have a customer that owns a restaurant in Moscow that would like to take this and somehow incorporate the burn and make a coffee table and put it in her restaurant. Oh, that's nice. So there's not much to it. I can just put it on the sawmill, cut it at a certain width, and then they can have it like that. And you could charge quite a bit just for something real simple like and that. And this is something you can do, but your local box store is never going to have. Correct. I mean, not yeah. even close to something like no. that. No. Well, they won't even, the sawmills won't accept logs like this. Right. So they just will trash them. Well, even if you didn't have a, a customer ready for it, you can take it and put it on the sawmill, and you can start making 1x6s, 2x12s, you know, all these different dimensions um, that you can get off that is, is different. So you can just take here and you can measure. You know, that is 19 inches across right there. And so you can go down and get a one or a two inch, two by 19, two by 20. Um, yeah, and you can sell that as well. Another thing that people are liking is you can just keep one of the edges not cut and make a live edge. You can make a live edge shelf out of it. Um, actually, I'll show you what we did in the house there uh, with some scrap cedar pieces that we use for logging. I'll show you what we made out of it real quick if that's okay. Yeah, it'd be great. Okay, let's go take a look at that. Okay. We just uh, made this the other day, um, and all we did was take some of the slabs and cut them, run them through the planer, and this isn't stained or anything, it's just, um, it's just raw cedar with the live edges on it, and it was, uh, we just, it had both live edges, we just cut one of the live edges off, and we uh, made an end, got some stuff on it here. You can kind of get a, an idea. It's a seven foot shelf, mm -hmm. and we just put uh, thin boards on the back. They're like maybe a quarter inch thick, and we uh, screwed them into the back. So that's the back of your shelf, and um, that's something you could just do for yourself. Or I'm sure you could find a really nice market for that as well. Oh, absolutely! So, that's gorgeous. So, and it wasn't much time and effort in it. It was pretty simple, and I'm not a finished carpenter at all so it's pretty rough but it still looks really nice so if somebody knew what they were doing they could really you know have fun with it yeah that's that's something that you look you look to see in pictures on the frontier right there you know yeah. it really is I love stuff like that that live edge is just awesome mm -hmm. so yeah I can explain that real quick yeah these are just little dug fir slabs and we needed some uh, place to store our wood so we just Put two pieces of two slabs together, you know, screw them into two by fours. You got slabs on the top and slabs on the bottom. Um, if I was to do it again, I would make these slabs as well and put a slab back just for um, aesthetics. It would look really nice, but I never got around to it. But it does a great job of holding, um, I think I calculated it's almost a tenth of a cord filled up to the top. Wow. And it doesn't take up much space and it kind of adds to the aesthetics of the room. It really does. That's it's beautiful. And you can customize it to wherever you want. So this fits for our house. And again, this is utilizing what others would just waste, oh, yeah. just throw, burn. Yeah. I cringe when I look at some of the burn piles out oh, yeah. burning with the whole trees in them. It just it's it's hard it's hard to watch. Ready? Yeah. All right, here we have a wood miser LT27. It's a complete manual uh, sawmill. There's no hydraulics, it's <clears throat> nothing automatic. Everything is done manually. You have to push the blade. It's probably frozen, which it is, but you push it through the log. So the log is stationary up on the deck there, and you push the blade through the log. This has a capacity of cutting up to a 24 inch in diameter log. You can go down to as thin a board as you want or as thick a board as you want. So it's really, really versatile. The kerf on it is probably an eighth of an inch, so um, you can maximize on your board feet tremendously. So when you look at the books and it says you can get about 100 board feet off this log, well with this you're probably going to get 150, 160 board feet off it. So you can really maximize on it. 
Now explain explain to everybody who doesn't know what you mean by the kerf is an eighth of an inch. The and kerf. compare that to the kerf of like a chainsaw. Yeah, yeah. So the kerf is the, the width of this blade as it goes through the log. It's going to take off sawdust a little bit. It's a very thin blade, so it doesn't waste a lot of wood compared to a chainsaw. You probably get quarter to half inch, so it adds quite a bit. And you also get the uh, I forget the name of the sawmills that have the large blade, they're quite a bit thicker as well. Mm -hmm. They go a little bit faster. This doesn't go real fast, but I like it because you have a lot of control and um, you can get very precise with it. And at the actual product, if you keep the blade sharp, um, when you're done, it looks pretty smooth. You saw some of the boards, yeah. you know, that one by 12, that was just a straight cut. It wasn't planed or nothing, so you get pretty good quality wood. Um, and the kerf that was in it was actually very attractive. It was a butcher. Yeah, you know, right. Yeah. Some of mine get butchered with that chainsaw. Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. it, it's it's very attractive with that. With you know, for for certain things, there are right. certain times you want it smooth as a board, right? <laughs> so to speak. Yeah. Uh, you want it as smooth as you can get it. Right. So, right. Um, do you have a lot of customers that ask and want kerf, and some that want the rough plain? cut look and yeah. plain? It, it's about half and half. A lot of customers with the siding. They just want a rough cut. Right. You know, they want the rustic look. And then somebody that wants um, you know, baseboards or, or something inside they want it claimed and look smooth. So. Okay. Yeah. I know at the mill when my, when I was there we had we ran a lot of cedar through there. Mm -hmm. And we had uh, we had a plain side and a rough cut right. side on everything. Right. right. And the, the rough cut side was actually referred to as the mm -hmm. money side. Really? That's what it, that's what the buyers were looking for. Right. But they could go to the office right. if they wanted. So. Right. And the plain side allows for a, a flat contact surface too. So. Right. Well, say on a, I don't know what your average log size is you've been running through here, mm -hmm. but say on a 12, 16 inch log, how many of those could you run through and get? I know, and I also know it depends on what dimensions you're making. But right. if you're making one inch, two inch, somewhere in there, uh, thick boards. Yeah. How, how many board feet could you do on a on a mill like this in a day? Oh, in a day? <clears throat> if, you if know, you a good it, hard day. Yeah, yeah. If you're doing one buys, um, you could probably get 700 board feet or so. If you're doing two buys or thicker ones, then you could probably get you know. Up to a couple thousand board feet. Right, away. right. Um, so I charge more for one by cuts than I do for two and three by cuts because you're you're cutting more. You're you're you know? losing more material right. and it's a lot more labor involved. Right, right. And another thing you got to take into consideration if you're milling for customers is the blade. Those aren't cheap. And if somebody brings wood to you and they have the nail through it and mm -hmm. you run a nail through it, that's part of your contract to say you know if if you run a nail through it, they're gonna have to pay for the blade. Okay. And typically a, a new blade for this is like 15 bucks. Wow. So it's not, okay. it's not a whole lot. So. And yeah, it adds up. Now do you do you run a magnet or anything? I do. Um, I do have a magnet okay. for logs that I feel have been you know, compromised with some kind of nail or something like that. Okay. If you buy, you get a tree in the city, it's going to have nails in it. Sure. You know? Or chain or barbed wire something, and yeah. all kinds of stuff in it. Right? Yeah. And so I usually have the customers, they usually go through it pretty well because mm -hmm. they know they're going to have to buy a blade. If it comes through, so. But if you're in a part of the woods where you can tell nobody's been, you're probably safe. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> now it's covered up in snow, but these are a lot of um, slabs that we'll go through. And this is how I made that shelf inside. Right. Where I picked through this pile, and <laughs> I made that shelf from the, the stuff in there. So. And there's a lot of board feet in that in oh, that yeah. right there. That's yeah. that's. That is several units of lumber right there mm -hmm. um, that you have, and or you could put it up almost the side and cut. Oh yeah, cut the edges off. Yeah, a lot of people like the the live edge look, or they like the whole rounded, you know, slab look. Or like a log siding almost. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So you can do that just with those as well. That's nice. Yeah. That's very nice. Now, do you do almost exclusively cedar right now? Or have you been um, doing a little bit of it a lot? I did a little bit of pine, but mostly this year I did cedar because I had a a customer that was building a cabin and he wanted everything in cedar. Okay. So that's really good. Man, that's a lot. That's a lot of cedar. Now, but like, but here's another example right here. So this is a, obviously it's a very nice looking cedar log. This is very thick. It's probably, you know, close to 30 inches. Yeah. Right there. 
when it fell. Now this is the top end of it. So this is one of the smaller ends of it. Wow. So, but when it fell, you can see it cracked. It went all the way through the whole tree. There's a big crack. It went all the way through it. And you take that to the uh, sawmill, they're going to scale that big time. Mm -hmm. You know, where you can put it up on your mill and you can set it up where you're making cuts, 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 and just, it may only affect one cut, but you get the rest of the whole log as premium lumber. Absolutely. So Yeah, you could take out an inch probably and get most of that cross-section out of yep. it. Yep. Uh, wow, that's... That is a, that's a beautiful cedar log. That's an amazing cedar log. Because yeah. usually by the time they get that big, ironically, cedar, which is known for rot resistant, mm -hmm. rots in the middle all the time. Yep. Which I've never understood that. Yeah, but yeah I know. Yeah, it's strange. <laughs> <laughs> but that is, that's a gorgeous log. I'd be interested to know with the age of a tree like that. And that's the top section you said. That's the top. Yeah, the bottom was about four feet. That had was, rot in, that, in the bottom? It had, yeah, a lot, probably 15 feet up. It was all rot. Right, okay. You know? But it had gotten burned with the wind fire. So. Now, real quick to, to the viewers, let's define what a board foot is, mm -hmm. and then let's talk about what kind of pricing you're seeing between pine, um, something like a red fir, mm -hmm. and then cedar on board footage. Yeah, a board foot is a, a 1 by 12, so it's a 1 square foot, 1 inch thick. So that's 144 cubic inches, Correct. roughly, 12 by 12 by 1 inch. Right. Okay. Yep, so that's how you get board feet. Uh, the sawmills pay by board feet, but they also scale every log. So if it's not a perfect log, they scale it down. Sure. So you always get so much more by doing it yourself. Um, typically, at the sawmill where we're at locally, it's about 1,200 a board, 1,200 a thousand, which is $1.20 a board foot. Okay. That's a lot for cedar. For cedar. And that's a great price. That's high, yeah. It really is. A, yeah. It, for people, that means a, a 12 by 12, 10 footer. Mm -hmm. That's what, 144 board feet? Um, yeah. For yeah. for a 10 foot 12 by 12, is 144 yeah. board foot, and you said $1.20 a board foot. Yeah. Uh, that doesn't take long to, yeah. to be able to load up. And well, to make it more, a 2 by 4 by 8 is 5.3 board feet. Mm -hmm. So 5.3 times $1.20, that's... But the mill's paying, so it's going to be more than that, it's probably $1.50. Sure. So you're looking at maybe 8 to $10 for a one 2 by 4 Right, right. 2 by 4 by 8 So Wow. Yeah, it adds up. So I usually don't sell a lot of 2 by 4 by 8 cedars. I usually sell, you know, one buys mm -hmm. or even decorative beans. Okay. You know, and then you could use the price goes up to 2 to $5 a board foot, depending on what it is. Wow. Um, That's nice. Uh, yeah. And so this isn't my property. Mm -hmm. So this is something that, you know, I will pay the landowner the log price. Okay. So instead of a logging company coming in and just really, a lot of logging companies don't do a good job of taking care of the, the forest when they're going through it, I can go through and pick out one or two trees at a time, give him the premium price, and still make a good profit off of it. Right. Okay. So, so you're you're taking care of the property in a way that a logging company doesn't have time really right. to do. They, they can't afford to do right. that. Um, and I imagine you get to select not just you're not necessarily just selecting premium. You're looking at something that might be dead standing right. and or has just fallen right. and is normally going to just be wasted in fire or rot. Right. right. Okay. And that's another. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, when you're looking to saw a log. You start by looking at the tree in the forest. And we're out here, and there's certain trees that we look at, and it's real important. You know, if that tree is all wonky and crooked, it's not worth milling. You're sure. going to get a lot of bend, and by the time you get on the mill and get it all squared up, you're not much, you don't have much left. And then what you do have, when it dries, it all twists on you. Yeah, absolutely. So it's really important to find nice, straight trees. I mean, you can work with whatever you got, especially cedar. Cedar's very forgiving. Mm -hmm. But if you had a dug fir or a pine that was all twisted, you know, even if you cut it straight, when it dries, it's going to have a hard time. You have to really, really pack it down. We'll talk about stickering when we get up to the, the house there. Okay. So that's really important, you know, find nice, good, straight trees. Um, when you're when you're sawmilling, also you don't want the log sitting down for a couple of years because then the fibers get really tight and hard. So even a white fur, it, it's like almost cutting through a brick. 
It becomes more like hardwood at that yeah. point. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard. So you want to cut the tree as soon as you cut it down um, before it dries out too much. Okay. That's the best time to cut it. Although with cedar is kind of the exception. I've cut down cedar that's been down for years and it still cuts nice. Yeah. It's just a nice wood. Cedar wood is a very unique wood. Yeah. It, it has a, it's interesting because it has a higher tensile strength than pine and fir. Right. But because of the lack of resin, it's lighter. Right. But it'll also shatter if you drop it just mm -hmm. right, you know. Yeah. Um, when I was flipping them boards, grading them, they'd be beautiful, and you'd go, and now you have two one by sixes, mm -hmm. and they're supposed to be a one by twelve. So yeah. they, they, it's very unique in in yeah. how the creator made yeah. cedar, you yeah. know, in particular, and mm -hmm. it's a valuable. Very, it's probably other than redwood, I would say it's the most valuable tree we have in the West. Right. That, right. That's native. Yeah. yeah, I agree. I agree. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Point, point the camera over here at the sawmill. <clears throat> You've noticed that we have some homemade ramps that we built. And we usually use a tractor, but when it snow out, the tractor gets stuck. So we just um, I'm bring it. We take a PV, which is a post with a hook on it, and we just roll the logs right up on there. And um, you'd be amazed at how big a log you can put on there just with the PV. Yes. We put one on bigger than that just with one PV. Wow. And just two guys who just rolled it up on there and that was... I, that's something I've been needing to get is the PV because mm -hmm. there's a lot of areas I've... I mean there's all... anytime you're dealing with that you oh, need yeah. it. You have to have it. You yeah. can't push that by hand. Yeah. And um, you know I do like my chainsaw mill because it went in, in situations down by the river. I'm not yeah. using a PV to get it out of the river. Right. So I can cut it yep. up there. So there are advantages oh, to yeah. it. Oh yeah, yeah for sure. But that with a PV is yeah. what you have to have. It really yeah. is. Now I got a homemade PV at home. I'll show you how you can, how you can make your own. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, because I found one in a town of logging town. That the whole town is just a logging town. That's the whole history of yeah. it. Yeah. One PV in town. That's yeah. it. Yeah. And the guy told me they used, used to be able to walk into any store. Gas yeah. stations even carried PVs just 20 yeah. years ago. Mm -hmm. But uh, with all the regulations uh, on logging, yeah, they've just gotten rid of almost all of them. Yeah, it's sad. It's really sad with the. Yeah, the regulations they put on you. But if you have your own property, this is the ideal way to uh, build your own house, to make extra income, to even pay for the pay for the land even. Yeah, absolutely. You know? So I wouldn't have it logged because you're going to get pennies on the dollar if somebody comes and logs it. Yeah. You do it yourself and sell custom pieces. That's where you're going to make the money. And you you, <laughs> you do a little advertising and marketing. Yep. You could you got a full time job here yeah, if that's you what you want. Yep. Yep. And I do. You know, this isn't my main job. You know, we do chickens and pigs and stuff like that. Sure. But this kept me busy all summer long, you know, with everything else. So, yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. Once you cut open that first log, you get hooked pretty quick. Yeah, you you're do. Hooked. You do. You get hooked yeah. with milling. Yeah, when you start looking at everything that's down, you're like, hey, that you can do that or that with it, you know, so. That was the curse of getting certified in grading because mm. now I don't care what I'm looking at, furniture, mm. anything. I'm like, oh, that's, you know, <laughs> I'm looking at knots and yep. I'm looking at pitch and mm. I'm looking at twist. And so there's a there's a lot to it. Yeah. Oh, and I see you have a big beam over there. Is that a cedar beam there? Mm hmm. OK. Yeah, it's got a, it's it's all rotted out. So but you can use it as a bench. Right. You know, or something. Yeah. You know, yeah. So. Lots of stuff to do with these yeah. these pieces. Yeah. I actually saw one the other day and it's gone now. It was on the side of the highway and it was it was about this kind of diameter, right? Mm -hmm. Not very tall and it had a lot of rot in the middle. Mm. And uh, and I went and I looked at it and I actually flipped it over and it was it was solid on part on part of the bottom and then there was rot on the top. Mm -hmm. So it was probably actually flipped upside down is what it was. And I thought I'm going to take that and I'm going to cut Mm. a back out and have an outdoor yep. chair a low sitting chair next to the campfire be mm. great and it was gone when i got back yep. so got to strike by the iron thought yeah 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 and you have all these it's a, all these slabs that you cut off you know i have people that come by and just want the slabs because mm -hmm. they'll make a wall halfway up their house you know just as a decorative especially with cedar you peel the bark off it it has a beautiful texture to it it really does so yeah, everything you can be reused. Well, that's, that's, that's a lot of fun. I look forward to seeing what you're going to be able to do with some more of that stuff. Yeah. Well, one thing we'll go up now is go up to that house. And if you're going to be on sawmill, I've seen the mistake that so many people make is they spend so much time cutting down the tree. And it takes a lot of effort. It's dangerous. Mm -hmm. You know, they deck the logs, they saw, and they spend all this time, and then they just stack all the wood. 
um, somewhere where it gets all ruined. Mm -hmm. You need to almost spend as much time stickering your wood as you do sawing your wood. You got to do it the right way. If you don't, your wood's going to get ruined. So it's really, really important to take care of that. And I'll show you how I do it up, up there. Let's go show them stickering wood. So this is a, we call it, I just call it a cedar slab. This is a cedar. And it's about, you know, 20 inches to 16 inches across. It's about three inches, three inches thick. The reason I did three inches thick is because I can put it back up on the sawmill and cut an inch and a half or cut one inches out of it and still have, you know, or if somebody just wants a nice classy looking three inch mantle, um, you could, you could turn them into tables. There's lots of things you can do if you're handy with wood that would just look amazing with this stuff. Um, for something like this, you know, you could charge five or six dollars a board foot. And people say, well, that's pretty easy. Yeah, the cuts are easy, but when you're dealing with big logs, it's dangerous. You know, so you got to take that into consideration. People, I get calls all the time. I got this big pine that's three foot in diameter. And they think I'm excited. I'm like, no, nah, that's all right. You know, they're, they're dangerous, especially when you do everything manually. Mm -hmm. You know, so I prefer the 18 to 20 inches. You get a lot of wood out of them. And they're a lot easier to roll and twit and move around and stuff like that. The big logs, they're just they're just tough. So, yeah, you, you get a 30 inch log rolling on you and it's um, yeah, you're down it's for a bit. Scary. So you can see the smoothness of the uh, bandsaw. You got some saw marks there, you know, going up. But other than that, it's pretty smooth. Let's see if I can show the curve here. Yeah, right in there, some. So that's the that, that right there is the kerf mark from the blade. Right. But then you have this gorgeous live edge on here. Yeah, and people do. They make mantles uh, and tables and whatnot out of these. And I try to use logs that have cracks in them that I wouldn't be able to get a lot of good lumber out of them. To make this kind of stuff. Here's one here underneath. You know, it's probably closer to two feet in diameter. And you're working with wood, you know that you can see the potential in this. Like right now it's got some pine needles, it's got ice frozen on it, um, and it's uh, it doesn't look all that attractive, but if you were to clean it up and uh, plane it and smooth it out, it would just look phenomenal. Now is this a, is this a section of crotch wood right here? This is a piece of cedar as well. Is it where it's split into two or three pieces? Yeah, I think this is actually a, the butt end of a, of a tree here. Okay. So, so there are certain sections in the tree that, that were not usable, so we just cut out the sections you could use and then we could mill them up. I think this is off an old old dead standing cedar that was been dead for years and years. Now you were talking about stickering down there at the mill. Why don't so, you explain to our viewers this. The yeah, so this is the process of stickering. Let me uh, take this off real quick. Now this is cedar, if it was dug fir or pine I'd probably have a lot more weight on top of it. Cedar has a tendency to not really do a lot of moving around, it's just a really all around nice wood to work with. You mean by twisting when you say move around? Right, twisting okay. and cupping and stuff like that. So stickering is just the process of everything's frozen. <laughs> I put in a sticker which is basically a little one by one by four feet long. You want it kind of thin, that way it allows the air to go over the surface area more. And you can see there's air flow between each stack. These are all one by sixes. So the air just kind of flows through all of them. 
it's important to keep them off the ground. So you see I have some stumps. Then I have a, looks like a, a four by six. And then I have some, just some random pieces. They're equivalent to like a four by four. So it's another four inches off. Then I put these little stickers so that the wood is getting air to it. So I'm a good, you know, probably 16 inches off the ground. And if you're in moist area, you might even want to put a tarp down um, so that the bottom board doesn't get too uh, rotted out down there. Now, take, take your time, set up the stickering station. I like this method right here. It's off the ground, it takes longer, and you have to cut nice pieces of wood to make your stickers. And some people don't want to cut stickers, they don't want to cut beams because that's the value, but you have to you have to do it. You have to cut out things so that you can make. Even stickers have to be of good quality. Now, you were, you were talking about a customer that did a lot of cedar siding and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Is he buying air dried cedar from you or wet cedar? Um, he did both. Now, do you charge more for air dry versus wet? No, okay. no, it was the same. He had a garage that he kept in. Cedar dries very, very quickly. Okay. If it's in a, if it's in a dry environment, you know, under 50% humidity, and you got air flowing, it'll dry within a week. Okay. You know, what's my experience? You can buy a moisture meter, check it. Um, anything under 20%, you're usually pretty good to, to work with. With the cedar? With the cedar, yeah. So, and cedar doesn't hold a lot of a lot of moisture in it either. No, it doesn't. There's no resin, like, not, not in the way that, I, I think in five years of grading, I had resin come on my finger one time mm -hmm. from a cedar board. Wow. And there were nights I did, 9,000 boards a night, so. Oh, yeah, so you know. Um, and, and, and go ahead and point out here, mm -hmm. you know, we're 100, 110 degrees and 10% right. humidity in the summer. Right, right. Yeah, so in the summertime, um, you don't want your wood in the sun. You need to keep it in the shade. The sun's going to crack it and cup it and twist it very quickly. So definitely keep your wood in the shade somewhere you can see. This is a really shady area, and I keep it all in the shade, and I keep um, a metal roofing over all of it. And depending on the type of wood, I will, this is one by three for a customer that's going to do baseboards. Oh, nice. Actually, the one by threes are for trim around the windows and doors. The one by sixes are gonna be for baseboards. Okay, so these are specifically for customer you yep, have right now. so I'm gonna now. have to, you know, some investments is planer, uh, jointer, you know, different things because this is all rough cut. So the edges aren't straight, the tops aren't straight. Um, so you have to do all of that yourself. So you're going to have to edge them and uh, smooth them out and all of that if the customer wants that. So, okay. And I first started out just selling all rough cut and then I let the lumber pay for my planer and my jointer and all the other stuff, the routing table. So mm -hmm. you kind of let the business pay for itself. So. No need to go in in full hog if you no. don't if you can't afford it. No, I couldn't bat. afford it, and so I said, "Hey, let's just do all rough cut." And then I got some big, uh, big sales just with rough cut, selling mm -hmm. beams, custom beams to a guy in Spokane that was building a. Um, I forgot the name of the uh, the beams. It's like a using beams for structures. Mm -hmm. you know, so, and he uh, bought quite a bit, so I was able to buy the planer and the router with that money. So. And then now you can expand your operation once you can, now I can do tongue and groove and shiplap and all that other stuff. So now I can market, you know, pretty much anything. So now you know you have a market, right. which is good. Yeah. And, and that market is paying for your expansion. Correct. So. Yeah. And YouTube is awesome because it's, you know, I had somebody say, you know how to do this? And I was like, yeah, I wasn't sure. So I just uh, <laughs> YouTubed it and it was pretty simple. So yeah. Now I can, I'll go over and show you some more slabs. Okay, yeah. There. Yeah, let's look at a couple more slabs. So here's some more slabs that we cut up. These are about 24 inches, eight and a half feet long. Um, and I probably sold, well, quite a few, maybe 15 to 20 slabs this uh, over the past year at premium prices. So Craigslist is a great way to advertise. Um, just get really good pictures. Pictures are really important, mm -hmm. you know, so get really nice pictures, clean pictures, um, and get what you need to get out of them. Don't be afraid to ask what it's worth to you. 
So I, I used to have a problem with trying to compete with Home Depot and, and I used to try to compete with their prices and I worked so hard to try to meet their board foot price and it was just wasn't worth it. Not gonna ever meet, no. match that. So, so like on one of these, let's just say one of our lovely viewers wants to purchase one sure. of these. What's the range on a slab like this? Yeah, for something like this, it's about 24 inches, eight and a half feet long. I would charge anywhere from 250 to 300 dollars for this. Uh, that'd be the minimum. Right. You know, so you can add value to it by planing it, smoothing it out, make a table out of it, and get much more money. That depends on which part of the country you're in too. So board feet prices vary from east coast to west coast. So depending on where you're at, what you can get for it. We're in a pretty isolated area up here in rural Idaho. And so if they want to pay for shipping, exactly to ship something like yeah. this to Texas would cost a fortune. Yeah. But you, you're willing to do that if they want oh, it, yeah. right? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, um, was there anything else you wanted to point out on these real quick? I don't think so. Do you want to give a email or a phone number or anything like that that they can reach out to you if they're interested in making any purchases? Okay, sure. just yeah. whatever you're comfortable with. Okay. And um, yeah, if you guys have any more questions, you can um, go to my website. It's uh, kindredfamilyfarm.net. And there you can give us an email if you have any questions about anything. I'll be more than happy to, to help you out. So thanks for watching. Awesome. Awesome. You check out, uh, if you're interested in, in purchasing any uh, material from, from Mickey, or if you're interested in uh, learning more about all this, you can check him out. His website is right up here. And um, he's a great guy. And uh, again, thank you so much, Mickey.